to say a quick thank you for tuning in. It means a lot to us that we have incredible people such as yourself to share this content with. So we hope it inspires you to continue to get out there and make the most of your journey doing whatever it is you're doing, wherever it is you're at. If this video brings you value or you enjoy the content we share, please take a moment, hit the like or the subscribe button. The highest compliment you can give our channel is to share with others. Thank you very much and enjoy this week's episode. Okay, so it is Thursday, the 5th of September. We are in Durango. We got here late again last night. We were learning our lesson and not booking too many things close together. Multiple nights make everything so much easier. But today we're gonna to be taking the Million Dollar Highway up the uh, San Juan Scenic Highway. We have been warned that this is a very challenging trip, especially in an RV but all the reviews say it's totally worth it, so we're gonna give it a shot, make it happen. What do you guys think? Someone's a little bit nervous about it. I think we should go the easy way. <laughs> the Safety easy way. first. I'm excited. No, hard way. I do gymnastics. Hard way. Daniel, what do you say? Hard way. Hard way, the pretty way? Yeah. We're gonna try to stop at a Box Canyon waterfall, and we're looking forward to this. This is going to be an interesting drive, to say the least, but with lots of really good stops along the way. All right. What's he doing, Hallie? Is he waiting on his owner? Hallie. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> so we are at Handlebars in Silverton, Colorado. Silverton is an old west mining town started in the late 1800s. It's got people like Wider, who used to work here. It's known for mining, for bordellos, which are um, prostitution houses, and gunslinging. So this little you know, main drag you see throughout the town was frequented by gunslingers. Uh, it literally feels like an old western town where you'd expect to see something like, I don't know, uh, 310 to Yuma or what was that movie? Oh, Tombstone. It shot a little bit further south. But the restaurant is amazing. It's got all kinds of things. And when you're in Colorado, in a town like this, you have to do something kind of daring when it comes to the menu. So, we ordered up some Rocky Mountain oysters. Never had before. Holly's really excited to eat these. Uh, so no, we're going to pass them around and see how they go. I did not think a Rocky Mountain oyster would look like this. I thought it was going to be a little bit more um, round. Round. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that. But here we go. We'll pass them around. I don't want one. I'm oh, not okay. having one. Let's try it. No, I don't want one. Let's do it together. Daniel, sit down and eat this. Okay, here we go. You don't want to dip it? 
It's a little hard for us to breathe. said there's Mac so like we're sitting on a geoactive zone and they dammed off a section and they gated off a section where hot water used to bubble up to the surface and they've piped it downtown to the hot springs and so now 150 degree of water comes out of these pipes and gets piped down to the city where they have pools and springs and spots that people enjoy. Pretty cool huh?
super tired. So last night, well yesterday, we drove through Silverton, we drove through, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Array, Montrose, then hit 50 in Colorado, and drove all the way east to um, Una Vista, and then cut south into Colorado Springs. So a lot of mountain passes and total darkness, and all of a sudden you're driving <laughs> and there's like a sheer cliff and you have no idea how high, how high up you are. Because it's so dark. <laughs> So you're gripping the steering wheel like, like in a death vice. <laughs> and uh, I didn't realize how tired I was. I, I really don't know if it's like the altitude just getting to me or if it's just the strenuous driving that we did yesterday, but we're tired, so. But what was also so scary is like, it was so pretty and the moon was shining really bright and it would make the silhouettes of the mountains in front of you. <laughs> Look, you could see the silhouette of the mountain and you're like, oh, those are some really big mountains. Yeah. And we're headed to them in the dark so we learned a lot on this trip we'll probably do a post just about the things we learned but today uh not much planned really it's our last day of just kind of hanging out before we start heading back east to springfield and uh one day of driving this has been this has been incredible <laughs> like you, you hate to use cheesy words like magical but i mean that's about what it's been it's been pretty darn awesome yeah uh to think that we haven't been doing something like this before now is just crazy. Uh, so we already know we're, this will continue. We just don't know how or when. So that's kind of our next plan is to figure out how we're going to make this a little bit more doable, either more frequently or who knows, maybe maybe permanently. We, we don't know. We're, we're going to try it out. We're going to think through a couple things. We do know an RV is not for us. We've done the camper that's probably a little bit more in our bag, but we like a little bigger one, like a fifth wheel. Three kids, takes up a lot of space. Two girls, one boy. We need a little bit more compartmentalization instead of an RV where you only have one main cabin. But today, anyway, today we're going to go and run a couple errands. Yes. We have to um, head into Since Colorado Since we're back Springs. to, I feel like, a bigger city that has more amenities, we do need a bank that they have here yeah. to take care of some errands so yeah there's been no cell phone signal where we've been for the most part it's been there's uh, been no starbucks there's been no yeah. banks <laughs> or our banks you know? but we have had some really good food uh yes. like some local restaurants all along the way which has been fantastic the so mexican food is amazing yeah every time we see it if we're not hungry we want to stop there yeah no matter what <laughs> so we're going to colorado springs we're going to go do some errands and then we're just going to go have some fun um come back here we're staying here one more night so we don't have to drive our location and we can get here at a decent hour, maybe take the kids swimming and just chill. So let's go have some fun. Yeah. All right.
Did we lose dad? So the kids and I lost dad because he was flying the drone and he all of a sudden lost it. So he jumps in the RV to go find it in the Garden of the Gods, somewhere amongst these big cliffs of orange. And then we get stuck on the path wondering where's dad, where's our shelter? Because we see this big storm behind us starting. And we have this really nice camera with us that can't get wet. So we were about to find old school shelter in the trees. But I don't think the rain's coming our way. Maybe. <gasps> Look how thick that rain is over there. Oh, that's really big. Yeah. So let's go find Dad. So so where are we at? We're in Garden, Garden of the, of the Gods. Gods. And what state? Colorado. Colorado. So Colorado. we are at the Garden of Gods trading post. This building is over 100 years old. So early you know, settlers coming in this way would stop here. And this is one of the first trading posts in Colorado. It's pretty, pretty cool. And the garden itself is also pretty, pretty neat. What is going on here? I have no idea. I'm just starting to scratch who got out of here. We were hoping to go play laser tag. There's this place called um, Battlefield? Oh gosh, Battlefield, Colorado. It's supposed to be like one of the largest laser tag fields. It's outside. It's not like the traditional laser tag. These are um, high tech guns so they can shoot outside uh, long distances over a very, very large field. He was super pumped about it, but unfortunately the weather closed him down and we couldn't get into it. So. Instead of just going back to the campsite um, and you know watching a movie, we said let's just walk around Colorado City. So that's what we're gonna do. Just get out, stretch our legs a little bit more, have some fun, walk into some store shops, see what the see what the food's like, and just have a good time. Yeah. So I'm excited. What do you want to see? Inside stores and walk outside with you. Just want to walk outside, maybe get some ice cream. <gasps> yeah. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite. That. Was yeah. yeah. that <laughs> play some board games tonight, make the most of a rainy evening on the road. What's so special about this place? They make it a different way. They make it like I don't know. Like they they, they use grow. liquid nitrogen. I'm gonna get that the cookie monster. The cookie monster? Yeah. Okay.
Hey guys. Hey. Becca. Here we go. Howie. So we woke up really early. It's bright at sunrise. Kids are still sleeping. We are making our way back to Springfield, Missouri. Both happily to get home. It's sad to have this journey, or at least this part of our journey, come to an end. But it's a solid 10 hour drive ahead of us. We're trying to get as far ahead as we can uh, before the kids wake up. So here's to the journey. There's certain places when you're traveling, no matter what you're doing, if you pass by this place, you have to stop. Well, Gates Barbecue is a place for us. This is a barbecue legend in the Midwest. It's in Kansas City. It ranks up there with like, you know, some of the top 10 barbecue places in the country on some people's list. But this place is pretty cool. Uh, they have their own unique ordering style, has its own unique smell. Uh, they're very well known for their brisket and their ribs. So I don't think some of our kids have had the chance to see this before, and this is gonna be their first opportunity, so let us show you Gates. So we got back to our house in Springfield around 11 last night and this morning it's just been unloading the camper, getting it ready to take back to the owner Doug that we rented it from. Good rule of thumb is always return things better than when you found it. So we're doing a deep clean, gonna take it to a, a car wash, get it pressure washed. Um, other than that, it's just been a mad stack up of stuff in different rooms. The laundry's gonna be fun, but we're looking forward to getting this done so we can kind of rest and uh, just enjoy a down day with not else much going on. I be sweeping which is really okay, sweeping and I'm Good job. You got caught. Sleep really good. So we just dropped off the camper back in the truck. It has air conditioning. I've never loved air conditioning so much. But my truck, which is a sizable F-150, feels like a go-kart now <laughs> after driving that rig so much. Before we finish this thing out and roll the credits, let's take a moment and pause and roll back the tape and reflect for just a moment. Believe it or not, this entire trip covered a distance of over 4,000 miles, visiting eight different states in just under 10 days. Now, we know we only shared snippets of this trip with you and that just as in life, there are parts of the story that you're not seeing. The little arguments and disagreements, the occasional child meltdown, or daddy losing his temper after the AC quit working in the middle of the desert. But in hindsight, and only being a short time removed from this trip, even the bad parts have a special place in our memory. 
like leaving early on the first night by several hours, or the toilet in the RV just deciding to randomly stop working, or the nauseating sensation of vertigo while climbing Angel's Landing. As frustrating and scary as these instances might have been, the good moments so far outweighed the momentary discomforts. Like the morning we woke up in Golding's Canyon, surrounded by the sun-scorched rocks, and seeing the rugged beauty of the Three Sisters in Monument Valley, and how could we forget the soothing sound of water and feeling the crystal clear water washing around our ankles in the narrows? Or the majestic distinction of the Pueblo Indians' homes built into the cliffs at Mesa Verde. We will never forget how the big mountains made us feel so small, or the sense of pride that came from summoning Angel's Landing accompanied directly by the sense of humility due to the toll that the hike took on me. The magnitude of the beauty we witnessed forced our minds to think of the beauty and majesty of the one who created these things. And as a result, we constantly found ourselves with a silly grin on our faces as we contemplated new odds and new wonders. But what was possibly the best part of this trip was the simple fact that we were able to make this journey together. Hearing the frequent sound of the laughter of our children, the dedicated focus time of seeing new things for the first time and learning about what we are seeing, the memories we'll have of the kids rolling down the pink coral sand dunes or jumping off the rocky banks into the lower emerald pools or Daniel's constant smiling dirty face. This was without a doubt the type of vacation that dreams are made of. And whether you love the full-time RV life or you're just interested in taking an RV out for the first time on a vacation with your family or you don't even care about RVs, I hope you will heed this admonition. Get out there. Get out there together. Do what you were able to do today to enjoy that extra time with your family. To spend quality time with the people that you love the most. I am not encouraging some reckless abandonment of your responsibilities, but to consider that one of the greatest responsibilities is to enjoy the time with the people that you love and cherish the most. We have all heard the story of those who are at the end of their life and the things they wish they had done differently. No one wishes they had a bigger house or more things. They all wish they had spent more time with the people they love the most. They had taken that family vacation that they had dreamt of and planned of but never executed. They wish they had made up with the closest people to them sooner. This is your permission to do it. Take the trip. Plan the journey. Awaken a new sense of awe and wonder and take in the beauty of creation and marvel at its creator. So do it. Get out there and enjoy the journey.